Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are going to be taking a look at a past client system. Um, actually, the only thing that this individual bought for me was a custom built spindle cable with uh, DS flexion. You can see it right here. I'll just give you guys a highlight. And you can also see he also purchased my remote VFD cable. And you can see he made a beautiful little pendant that he actually mounted to his chassis. And when I actually uh, came out with that cable in the length, because I get a lot of different requests for different lengths, mine's 40 foot. Um, of course, you can cut it or you know remake it into whatever length you want. The reason I went so long is naturally you can set off your VFD wherever you'd like it. Well, in this video, what I'd like to do is discuss a system that you can see here that was done correctly. And when I say correctly is a lot of my videos, I always show spot the knot. In this video, I want to show a system that's actually done with care, like many of you want to do, and yet so many seldom see online. We see a lot of systems being uh, manufactured. We see a lot of systems coming out. We see a lot of different guys talking about what they're going to do. Most of the time, their system is filthy. It's full of dust. It's full of debris. You could see how clean this system is. And again, it is one of the Onefinity units. You can see here how he's got the dust collector, again, the cables. And what's interesting about this system, and again, I didn't actually speak to Perry, and that's the client's name about this, but um, I love how he actually tied the cables. And if you look, he went all the way over on his vacuum tube and came all the way back, and he didn't implement the cable chain that came with this system. Now, I didn't ask him why he did that. I'm assuming he did that because he realized, look, this cable chain is not going to work. A lot of times guys assume that every part that comes with the machine has to be used. This is not the case. And you can see that this, the way he actually set this up is fine. It's very clean. It's very neat. And again, you can see just how simple you can have a really efficient machine if you take the time to do it right. Now, I'm going to tell you honestly, I'm sure he spent some time making this up, but using the remote VFD operation module here where he can come over here with the digital interface and adjust his speed, RPM, a lot of guys think you have to always go with the software to do that. You can see the way he made the module here, and this is the way I actually intended the cable to be used. His screen is right here. He really doesn't need that to, to actually control anything other than if he decided to, the spindle on off, which he's working with Onefinity as far as I know, to get support on getting that taken care of. But as far as the cleanliness, and we look at how everything is organized and neat, just like the last system I posted, um, John, who I was discussing on the uh, misstep issue and the access issue he was having. If you look at those systems, just like this, it's amazing you can see how clean this is. I love the air hose he has here. I think many of you would appreciate that. You can see he's got a little artwork going on. Table's nice. I mean, you could see just how clean a setup can be. And again, it doesn't have to take up a huge amount of space. He's got his VFD box here, which I love. I mean, if you're going to have a VFD close to your system, when I say close, anything closer than 10 feet in proximity, having it enclosed is fine. The thing is, we see many of them enclosed. It's understanding that we need airflow. And you can see how he has an intake fan and an exhaust fan. He also has a temperature gauge here. Very, very well done. We can see here uh, we've got our cable entries into the system itself using glands. Everything here is done the way it should be done. Um, I'm going to back out now, come over to another image so you guys can see this. And again, of course, I have asked Perry for his permission um, and I'm real grateful. He said he was inspired by a lot of my videos to do everything right because he's got a nice EMI filter right here. I mean, this is really, really clean. We've got our ground bus. You can see our ground bus set in. Here's where my spindle cable comes in, enters into the VFD. Okay, we've got our DIN rail right here. He's got uh, all of his other electronics hooked up. He's got it really isolated. You can see how the wires are all tied neat. And again, we have our two fans. You can see how we have our wire ties and our wire tie hold downs all set. This is the way it should be done, guys. And again, this is not a fast process. I can tell you right now just by looking at this. And again, 
see my cable in detail you can see how everything here is set up and very clean very neat very efficient once again there is the digital interface from the HYVFD and you can see the ribbon cable coming in under the table very easy to work with it looks extremely professional and that's the way most of you are intending your system to turn out I cannot emphasize enough guys take your time you know I didn't ask Perry and I should have how much time it actually took him to um, get the system to this level but rest assured this was not an hour process guys and that's why I say when you see systems like this and we all we all love looking at them I mean anybody who's in this genre when you see something done right and you realize it's done right you appreciate it because you know what kind of time is is really taking an effort to get there um, we also see two different color hoses I'm sure one is an in and an, ex and an exhaust as far as the water for the cooling of the spindle that's a great idea um, seldom done but very very good idea he's also got his bucket right here again um, he kept it high and that's something I always discuss too. Um, keep your bucket or whatever tank so to speak for your spindle as high as possible guys because your lift rate on your pump you don't want to struggle with it typically what I like to do is I'll use an aquarium mounted over the table on a shelf and it does two things first of all an aquarium is see-through so being it's above the table you're working with gravity as far as the pump you're not lifting you're actually depositing the fluid and secondly putting it above the table and being it's in an aquarium it's see-through it's always giving you a visual inspection of your coolant to make sure that it's not low so it's just something to think about um, but like I said the way he did this here is perfect I'm sure he checks his, his coolant out and levels um, other than that I, I want to do some more videos like this because guys always get they always I don't want anybody to think I'm cynical in that I just always discuss what's wrong with systems there are a lot of really nice systems out there um, unfortunately I'm gonna to be totally honest most of them that we see posted with videos most of the time guys are so excited to put a video up they really don't finalize the system and when I say finalize I mean put everything in its place get everything cleaned up um, you can see his spoil board here the way he has everything he's got his mounting grooves and whatnot I mean you could tell there was a lot of time put in here and I know the Onefinity is not a super expensive machine and he made a machine that was economical that fits his need and it's set I mean it's basically all set up and it's the way I feel every vendor intends and hopes that most of their clients will actually end with and this is it right here I mean this is what it takes and again there is a lot of knowledge here a lot of time but in the end you can rest assured I even love his start and stop you can see it right here on the side of the table I mean really really well thought out and I cannot emphasize enough guys take your time that's the real key here you can see this was not a weekend project I'm sure this was some time but he did a very very nice job and again I'm gonna do some more videos like this and more uh, actual uh, clients that send me their systems because when you guys are proud of it I love to see why you're proud of it and I can definitely I told Perry it's one of the best systems I've seen bar none I don't care what the make is this is really clean so again guys I hope this video has been helpful I hope it gives you some ideas I will put links in the description below of again the spindle cable you can see the HY spindle cable here he is using my DS flexion you can tell by the uh, the mist orange cabling as far as the uh, PVC casing uh, but like I said don't ever feel obligated that you have to use the cable chain if it doesn't fit fit your spec for what you're doing with your robot change it come up with an idea you can see what he did here very simple and he'll never worry about you know MBR ratings on the cables or his tubing because everything is exposed the other thing to think about with something like this is that if if God forbid he ever has to change anything it's right there he doesn't have to dismantle everything on the system and that's what I mean by keep it simple neat does not mean that it has to be complex it means we have to think about the engineering and all of this is engineering whether it's wire tying whether it's organization it all has to be thought about and you can see here like I said if he ever has to service this system it's very very quick and that's really what you're looking at you know I mean like I said the vacuum hose here everything is well placed well thought out and you can see that there is definitely some time put in but it, it pays off so again I hope that this video is giving you guys some ideas 
And I'm sure if you watch it a couple times, it'll just go over it. Like I said, check it out. The air hose and stuff. Great idea. And it's mounted right to the table. I can't emphasize it enough. Having this stuff all right beside you is perfect, along with the stop button there. He's killing his power. Um, again, I get a lot of questions on that as far as guys want to do that with their controller. I don't recommend killing power directly to the controller per se. Uh, if you're going to do it, add a separate stop like he did here on a G540 type system like I sell. Um, the e-stop would be your best bet as far as an emergency, and then you would kill power to the system if required. Um, I don't know if this stop here, once again, I didn't cover that with Perry, but I don't know if this stop actually kills his VFD as well. Uh, most guys would do that. I'm assuming it probably does. We can see here that we do have um, the actual tubing here coming in. It's metal tubing coming in for his uh, wire guide. But um, if you're going to do that naturally with a VFD, it makes total sense because, again, that's major safety. And, again, these are things to really, really think about and brainstorm. Overall, the biggest thing I've seen in the past is that a lot of guys that use these type of enclosures, they forget to put proper ventilation. And when I say proper ventilation, I mean that the fans that are being used, they really don't look in detail at what those fans are doing. They just see that the fan is circulating air or removing hot air. What you guys want to pay attention to is the cubic feet per minute rating of the fan. And CFM, also known as that, is really how much air volume is moved by your fan. Guys in PCs, we used to look at that, you know, to look at overclocking. It really just tells you how much air you're moving in volume. And you really want to pay attention for whatever enclosure you're using to have a fan that's well balanced. Like it wouldn't make sense for him to have a larger fan with a higher CFM blowing air in and a one that's smaller um, actually exhausting it because, again, it wouldn't keep up. So I'm sure these are matched. You can see they're the same size. That's proper. Always check your CFM rating based on the enclosure you're using so that naturally we can exhaust the heat. And, and with a cyclonic action that he has here where one fan's coming in, one fan's blowing hot air out, there's no way for this temperature ever to go up. Plus, he put the digital thermometer down here. You can see it. And again, super, super, super idea. So on a just a quick glance, he knows exactly what his equipment is doing. And what I really like, and I can't emphasize this enough, look at where he mounted this. You know, I, I see a lot of guys, and I'm sure many of you do, seeing them mounting them under the table. The higher you keep your stuff, it's, it's just instinctively within line of sight, which means it's much easier for you to pay attention to things. Think about that when you're engineering. I cannot emphasize that enough. It's the same principle I just said about the tank for your water-cooled spindle. The higher it is, and if it's in a clear enclosure, you can see the coolant without inadvertently looking at it, forgetting about it, under the table. I've had guys run spindles dry numerous times. Over the years, I can't even tell you how many guys have done that. And you will overheat the unit and it will eventually die. So again, think about these things. All of this stuff comes into play, and it usually comes into play in one of two forms. Either you figure it out and say, hey, I'm going to revise the system. I get a lot of guys that do that. And I love that attitude. And then I get other guys that don't figure it out and wait for something to break and then say, hey, I'm going to fix this now. You don't want to be that guy. It costs too much money. There's too much time invested. Get your stuff set up right. Take your time. And like I said, use these videos. That's why I'm posting them. I'm taking the time out of my day to hopefully give you guys ideas, food for thought. And that's exactly what this is. We don't get to see a lot of systems in this at this level. And again, with a lower dollar amount investment, he did a fantastic job. I mean, this looks really, really great. And that's why I say if you guys can take some of these images and just work with them, you see exactly what's going on. And like I said, even with the digital interface here for his uh, VFD control, super simple. If he wanted to, and this is the way I designed this, I don't know if this unmounts, but I'm probably knowing Perry it probably does. Um, if he wanted to, he could unmount this, walk around his chassis if he's doing prototyping and control the speed on any angle. I have a lot of guys doing prototyping that want to control the speed of the spindle and look at different areas that are being machined. And this is what's really cool about this. We can remove this module, walk anywhere we want to be in the shop and control it. Plus, you have the true RPM of the unit. You know your amps. You know everything because this unit tells you everything. All these little um, abbreviations here 
they will give you all the information you need to know about what that unit is doing. So again, really helpful, really smart placement. And again, I hope you guys will use this video. There's a lot of cool things going on here. If you do have any questions, don't be afraid to message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. You can also message me uh, through my eBay store, eDealers Direct. Once again, you'll see links in the beginning of the video and at the end. Um, I, once again, I will be definitely doing more videos like this. Uh, I feel that this and doing more videos of the troubleshooting techniques like I discussed in the previous one, I think this is going to help a lot of you. I think many of you guys out there that want to do it right, want to invest the time, don't care about what it takes as far as in time investment watching the video, they're going to get something out of this. So again, spending, investing, you know, under 20 minutes to get some ideas, it makes sense. So again, guys, I thank you all for your support. Take care.